Thank you, Acting President. Um, and um, I, I'm pleased. I'm, I'm not going to speak for long on this bill because I think everybody has fully acquitted the, the legislation um, and there's no point repeating, repeating those words. Uh, but I, so I'd like to just focus on the, the amendments that I'm proposing to this legislation. And they actually go to um, some, some comments that Mr Quilty just made um, in, in regards to some of the restrictions on, on advertising. Um, my initial amendment um, deals with alcohol advertising, as I mentioned. Have, have, are my amendments there? They're already up. Oh. Would, would you like them circulated? Yeah, that, Ms. Yeah, that would be okay, great. Thank, thank you. We'll just um, get them circulated. Great. If you'd like to continue, yeah, Ms. Patton. Thank you. So it's this um it, it's the use of the word sexual in relation to alcohol advertising. And it's, it's the conflation, again, that somehow something that is sexual is automatically bad and that it is automatically dangerous. And I think this is a, you know, th th this is really unfortunate. So currently the legislation um, says that, that restaurants, businesses that sell liquor, li uh, liquor licensing, liquor companies, um, cannot uh, cannot advertise, cannot use advertising or promotion that is directly or indirectly sexual, degrading or sexist. Now, I have no problem if you want to prohibit degrading and sexist advertising. Um, that, you know, that makes sense. And, and I'm quite, you know, I'd be su I'm supportive of that and I think that's absolutely in line with community attitudes. But to prohibit something purely, uh, an advertisement to an adult for an adult product because it may be directly or indirectly sexual. Now, for a start, what is indirectly or directly sexual? Um, and, but why would we do that? I mean, the, de definitionary, the def dictionary definition of sexual is relating to the instincts, physiological processes, and activities connected with physical attraction or intimate physical contact between individuals. Sexual can mean holding hands. It can mean a loving look. It could mean a candle lit dinner. Um, it's the kind of expression that's a normal part of our lives. I mean, for goodness sake, none of us are here without sex. Um, I know we don't like to think about it, but our parents did it. And that's why we're here. <laughs> Alcohol may have been involved as well, but I'm not going to go there. <laughs> but it's an, it, what I'm just trying to get to is that sex, that sex is a normal part of our lives and that it's not, it's not by its nature bad or negative and should be prohibited. You know, we don't, we don't prohibit... Um, this expression, the, uh, sexual expression, when we've, for films, for food, for fashion, uh, for cars, uh, for, for anything, for the climate. Um, we, don't, we don't prohibit the, the use of sexual. So why would we prohibit it for restaurants, bars and alcohol retailers? Um, so to suggest that sexual is negative, again, I think this is out of step with it. And as a feminist, I find it kind of appalling that you would conflate sexual with sexist or degrading. You know, we can be sexual without it being sexist or degrading, without it being appalling to, to us, without it denigrating anyone. You can, you know, we can have sexual advertising that is positive, that is life affirming, that is pro women, that is pro, um, uh, pro equality. So I just think that's completely out of step and that's why I've, I've put up an amendment to simply remove the word sex, sexual from there. So that it would now, the prohibition would be on advertising or promotion that is directly or indirectly degrading or sexist. So I think that's a very simple, simple amendment um, because particularly when you think of 
what would be indirectly sexual? Like what, 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 would, uh, what would advertising that was indirectly sexual be? I, I'm not sure. I'm, I, like you, Mr. Ondaatje, I'm struggling. In fact, I just find it kind of a, a, a bit of a, an extraordinary overstep on our human rights. And, you know, while I may not have the same passion of the freedom fighters out there in the rebel parliament, um, I, I am, <laughs> I, I am a, I have been a campaigner for freedom of speech for uh, probably more years than they have. Um, now, as I said, I'm fully supportive of a ban on degrading or sexist material, but the section as it's currently drafted just goes way too far. Um, it would have a really perverse impact on those businesses that are licensed by the VCGLR to provide sexually explicit entertainment. So you've got a sexually explicit license, but if this legislation goes through unamended, they may not be able to advertise their business because by their very nature, they are sexual. Now, certainly limit you know, limit advertising so it's not sexist or, or degrading. But really, this would have a very chilling and sensorial effect. And particularly when you think of our LGBTI community. And, you know, that is about celebrating, their sexu about celebrating sexuality. A lot of the, you know, I'll use one of, um, one of my favourite uh, late night venues when I was um, allowed to do this was Poof Doof. Excellent night can thoroughly recommend it. Um, but would that be indirectly sexual? It may well be. Um, so I think this is certainly important um, that, that, yeah, that we, we have this, um, that we have this, this amendment is successful. Um, and in fact, I think the section, the advertising prohibition would look a lot stronger if it was dealing with sexist or degrading material. That would actually send a very strong message there. My second amendment goes to section 109C and removes the requirement for a delivery person to refuse to deliver if the customer is at risk of becoming intoxicated. Now, I, we've heard from, from a number of the other speakers, and Mr. Gr Mr Grimley in particular, about not even having um, responsible service of alcohol training embedded in there so that delivery drivers um, know how to not serve an intoxicated person. But how would you know how to ser not serve someone who is at a risk of intoxication? Now, we don't apply that to our to any other retailer of alcohol. We don't, we don't require restaurants and bars and bottle shops to not sell to a person if they think that person is at risk of intoxication. Now, if someone orders a bottle of whiskey and has it delivered to their home, could they, they could definitely, if they drank that whole bottle, they would get intoxicated. Um, if it was me, if I drank, an eighth of that bottle, I would probably be intoxicated. Um, <laughs> so how on earth are we asking delivery um, drivers to make that assessment of someone that they, if I give you this bottle of whiskey, you are at substantial risk of intoxication? Well, yes, everyone would be at substantial risk of intoxication if they were to drink that bottle on that day. You know, if someone was to order a slab of beer, absolutely at risk of intoxication. Of course, they may be sharing it with 15 friends, in which case they're probably not. So are we going to have to have a checklist of how much of that are you planning to drink tonight? Are you sharing it with anyone? Um, have you had any other drinks prior to me delivering this? Um, and if they, you know, we've already said you can't serve someone, you can't sell, deliver alcohol to someone who's intoxicated. But now to say you can't deliver alcohol to someone who is at risk of getting intoxicated, I mean, for goodness sake, I mean, how on earth can a delivery person um, understand that? You know, as I said, we have, we have clear guidelines on how to judge if a person is intox intoxicated. Um, and that's how the rest of the Act is structured. And I think this section should reflect that as well. Um, if we don't ask the bottle shop to test whether someone's at risk of intoxication before they sell them a bottle of wine, why would we ask a delivery person 
to, to have that test before we deliver them a bottle of wine. Um, so this is just putting enormous responsibility on the delivery people to ask them to ascertain if someone is planning to get intoxicated. You know, what are you doing tonight? Are you going to drink all of that? Um, I think this is, um, you know, if there, was, if there was some good reason why we should be asking this question, then it should have been throughout the bill. It should have applied to bottle shops, to restaurants, to bars, um, to, to everywhere, you know, so that the, the bartender can ask you, you know, are you planning to get intoxicated? Or when you go to the bottle shop and order that, that buy that bottle of whiskey, are you, how, are you going to drink that tonight? Or are you going to drink that over a week? Or, you know, how much are you going to drink? Um, it's, it's asking people to see into the future and it's asking people to double guess, um, uh, are, are the, to double guess a customer's motivations. Um, so on that, I hope that the House can support my amendments. I think they're quite, I think they're sensible. Um, I, I had hoped that, um, that we, we could have got, moved the government to, 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 amend, to amend it themselves. But I'm, I'm hopeful that the House will support these two, I think, very reasonable and very sensible amendments to this bill.